You're listening to the Public Health Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Dr. Charlotte Huntley. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this episode. On this podcast, we explore topics that are of interest for professionals at the intersection of public health and entrepreneurship. My name is Dr. Charlotte Huntley, and I'm really happy that you've decided to join me on this episode. I'm a public health entrepreneur, and I have well over 25 years of experience in healthcare and in public health, and I've supported a lot of entrepreneurs along the way. I'm excited to support you as well. So on this topic today, we're going to talk about the topic of project management tools. Have you thought about a project management tool, or are you using one, or has that even crossed your mind? So it really doesn't matter where you are, if you're just getting started or you've been in business for a very long time, this is an important tool that is necessary for your path, this path of entrepreneurship, whether you're a consultant or podcaster or author, whatever it is, our project management tool is going to help us organize, meet deadlines and get things done that need to be completed to meet the the deliverable, whatever the deadline, the objective, wherever you're heading, right? We need something to help, help us stay organized and make sure we get there. The short answer to my question of what's the best project management tool? When I get that question, I think to myself, really and truly, it is actually the best for you, whatever's the best for you. What's best for me may not work for you. I think there's a lot of options, which is great. We like to be able to make choices and have decisions and feel like we're picking something that works for us. It's a little bit, maybe not exactly a custom fit, but it needs, having options gives us the opportunity to pick something that's a best fit for us. But most importantly, it's just the one that you will actually use. So if you're needing something to help you get started or take the next step on something, whatever project management tool is going to help you get started and either take that first or next step. That's the best one for you. So I could tell you about something really fancy with lots of bells and whistles, but if you're going to spend six months trying to figure out how to learn it and not taking any other action, then it may not be the best one for you at that time. If there's something more simplified that you can integrate and run with it and take action, that may be the best tool for you at that time, at that moment. Okay. Are you following me so far? So the shiny bright one with all the bells and whistles can be the one you aspire to, but I just don't want you to get stuck in the distraction of the shiny bright objects, which can happen because there's something fancy and people talk about things that I, I even may share things on here that make you think, oh, wow, that I can't wait to get that. But it's, it's, it's not that you need to stop what you're using that's working for you and then go grab something else just because it's suggested or talked about. So I, I preface that all the time because I'm going to give you some examples that in just a moment of great project management tools. And it's not an all-inclusive list. It's just some personal examples that I like to share with you. But I just, before I even do that, I just want to make sure that you think and you embrace the fact that whatever is the best for you is the one that you're going to use, the one that's going to help you get to the first or next step. It also needs to be something that is easy to operate. So it doesn't mean that you have to shy away from things that are complex. You certainly, like I said, some things you will decide to use and you're just going to need to plan for that learning curve. Maybe you plan for a period of time that it's going to take to learn how to use it, get your team up to speed and so forth. I absolutely understand that and I agree with that. But for a lot of us, the ease of operation is going to be more important than the bells and whistles at the beginner stage or when you're at a point where Whatever you've used for a long time, you've outgrown, it's time to move to something else. You need to really consider that ease of operation, not just for yourself, but for even your team. And maybe, again, you may decide that the one that takes a longer time to learn is the best fit for you, and that's perfectly fine, but consider these factors. I also want you to remember that project management tools, the best one is going to help you keep. Uh, whatever it is, whatever the brain is, the best one for you should help you or help keep you or your project task. The best one for you should help keep your project tasks organized. I'll give you an example. With podcasting, we have so many steps in the podcast process. Podcasting is very time consuming and it takes a different level of dedication and it's 
easy to start. So many people can start a podcast. It is not easy to stay consistent. It is not easy to stick with it for the long haul. It's very time consuming. There are a lot of steps. And if, uh, when you're doing it all by yourself, it can be very overwhelming. If you have some support, this is the place. My first support team member that I hired years ago was to help with the podcast. So there are so many steps. We use a project management tool that helps us keep up with all of the steps. So for every episode that is produced, there are so many steps that go into creating that episode. And if it's a solo episode like this, where it's just you and me, that's like one set of steps. But if we invite a guest, that's a whole different set of steps. So we use a project management tool that allows us to have a template where all of the steps that we need for these solo episodes, everything gets checked off and not and completed because there are several different people involved in the production of this episode. So I have an on-site assistant. So we have a team member that's full-time in the business that helps with all these different tasks with the podcast episode myself. And then we hand it off to a team, an editing team, which includes an audio editor and then a different set of editors that will listen and write the script for it and and put everything together to make it sound wonderful. And then we go through another set of steps to get it scheduled and out to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all the places that you're listening. So there's a lot of steps. And they're similar when there's some there's solo episodes like this. And then the set episodes for guests are all similar. So we have a set of tasks and we have a project management tool that keeps track of that. So when I finish my part, I check a few things off and then that triggers an alert to another team member to finish putting different pieces together. And then they send it over to the editing team and that triggers a different set of alerts that will let us know when the editing team finishes with that and gets it back to us. And it even brings in our social media team because then they know when everything is complete, then they can create posts and get everything out to social media. So that project management tool helps us keep all of those things organized because while we're doing this, ep- while they're processing one episode, we could be starting the next episode. So there are multiple episodes in progress at the same time. And then we have more than one podcast as well. So it can be very complex. So a good project management tool, the one that we're using is helping us keep all of those different parts very organized. Not to mention we have our consulting business and our client work and our different projects that have all these different deadlines and due dates and things that need to be done. It could be very overwhelming to try to keep that in your head, but a good project management tool helps us stay organized. That's huge. So whatever project management tool you decide to use, make sure that it helps you stay organized. And then the other part of that is it keeps you on time. So the best project management tool will keep you and your project on time, meeting the deliverables and the the deadlines for the deliverables is important, right? Your client, you want your clients to be happy that you completed it when you said you were going to complete it in that proposal. So a good project management tool will have those features that help you meet the deadlines and keep your project on time. So what I say to my team when I think about our project management tool is that it's our project management tool makes sure that things get done. That's its purpose in in our business. It's to make sure that things get done. So when it gets to the project management tool, like it, it it sits in other places, but when we get it to the project management tool, that's when it's like making sure things get done. For example, with the podcast, there's a separate document we'll use to organize our thoughts and ideas for episodes and outline things in different places. But when it's actually time to produce and create it, it goes to the project management tool. Okay. Took us a while to kind of get to that organizational point. So here are some examples for you. Excel, let's not, or a spreadsheet. So whether it's Google Sheets or Excel, actually Excel, let's not underestimate the power there because at the very beginning, if you're if you're at the beginning, that is the best thing. You can organize everything you need to do very well in that Excel sheet. If you only have, maybe if you're coaching, you've got just a few clients, you may only need something like a spreadsheet. I kept mine very organized on the spreadsheet at the beginning. When you're just getting started with a lot of things, you can organize so much in a spreadsheet. We use spreadsheets like nobody's business around here (laughs) because they keep everything organized. All the details are together. And that's what I meant earlier. We get it organized, get our thoughts out. And then when it's time to put it into action, it moves to the 
another tool. At the very beginning, though, everything happened from the spreadsheet, beginning to end. We put the deadlines, due dates, everything in there. We just managed that in our calendar. And that was our project management tool, the Excel spreadsheets and our calendars. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely wonderful to keep it simple. And it's easy to operate and it helps keep your projects organized. It's just when you outgrow that and need something else, then you can add on to that, like we've done the other project management tool, plus the Excel in the spreadsheets. We do those well. Another one, another example of a good project management tool is Trello. Now it's been many years since I've actually used Trello. I did use it, oh gosh, I want to say, well, it's been about 10 years ago, but (laughs) it was a, a great tool back then. I think that it is, I'm sure that there's been a lot of improvements. It's probably a great tool now, but Trello is one. I know other people that have used it in recent years and it was, uh, and, and they really enjoy it. So that's why I included it in my, in my list for you to consider Trello as an opportunity for project management. It may be something that you decide is, is great for you and your team. Another tool that I've heard great reviews from, and I know a few people who use is monday.com. It's uh, if you like spreadsheets, then you may really like monday.com. Um, I don't really have any personal experience with it. So I don't have a personal, any, any input other than a few people that I do know. Well, I really enjoy that one. We considered it and I can't remember why we didn't use it, but we could, did consider it one time, but I have not ever used it. Another one that's really popular that a lot of people, I know a lot of people who use this one is ClickUp. They really like its features and there's a free version of ClickUp that people really like and they talk about how the great the features are. I have not used ClickUp, but I know so many people who do use it. So, and I hear about the free version. So that's a great way to start because there's a lot of robust tools that you can try out in the free version to see if it's really something that will work for you. I think if you are, well, you'll have to decide for yourself. I know we, in my business, we use Asana. I love Asana. I've used it for a very long time. When I heard so many of my friends that use ClickUp, talk about ClickUp, I had already been using Asana for a while and it works well for us and I didn't want to change it. And we, like I said, are so many complicated steps with our podcast production process And we actually produce, like I said, more than one podcast. So that was a big part of it. And then we have our consulting business and we have a lot of, our team has grown so much, but way back when it was just me and one assistant, we used Asana. When it was just me before I even added the assistant, I used Asana by myself for a very long time and then added the assistant. And we used it for on the free version for a while before we upgraded to uh, one of the paid plans. And it's very robust and it integrates nicely. I think all of these are great options, but we still organize everything in, in a Excel, in spreadsheets. We use uh, spreadsheets very well. And we then use Asana to make sure things get done. And um, my team absolutely loves it. They're always, and even to this day, they still are discovering new features and new ways to integrate and make it even better for our team. So I still go back to what I said to you very beginning. The best project management tool is going to be the one that you will use and that will help you get from where you are now to taking the very next step. It may be the very first step for you, but often it's just the next step. If you're listening and you're already at the point of thinking about that, you've already taken some steps. So it's not necessarily your first step. So I think the very best tool for you is going to be the one that's going to help you take the next step. It should be easy for you to operate and help you keep your tasks organized and everything on time. Like I said, make sure things get done in your business. I hope this is helpful. I love talking about these tools and automation. I don't like for you to sit on things. I think sometimes we get decision fatigue and we struggle to make a decision on something. I think do a little bit of research and then just try one out. I wouldn't jump around uh, again too much because once you learn and you get familiar and it works for you, like when we got very comfortable I I scared to say the word comfortable because I don't typically like to say that. It's like a almost kind of dangerous to get comfortable. But (laughs) when we were using Asana, we had got it set up for us and we really enjoyed. um, It was very beneficial for us. There was not a reason for us to switch. Everybody's talking about ClickUp and other things. And I believe it's a great product and it works really well for them. 
but we were very happy with where we were and we had everything, a lot of things customized. And we just, I made the decision not to make the switch because I didn't want to go through that transition. I was very happy with where we were with Asana. And once a year, we do review some of our main products and, and just to make sure that we're still where we want to be. And if things, you know, were to ever change and we needed to switch to another a software, I wouldn't be opposed to it. It would take a little while to transition and that's fine if it's what we need to do is the decision you make as a CEO of your business, right? You, you decide what's best for your business and for your team. But I think for wherever you are now, if you're needing to get your first project management tool or you're just needing to level up the one that you've been using, then any of these options that I've suggested are, are good ones and you just pick one that you would like to try and, and see if it will work for you. So I'd like to also remind you that we have an awesome mastermind group program. We do a lot of deep dive discussions and about things like this in this group program. It is best suited for established public health entrepreneurs where we work together online and also gather together in person twice a year for a two-day retreat. So we've had entrepreneurs come from all over the U.S. and around the world, really, to join us in person. Enrollment for our mastermind is only open twice a year, June and December, and only to people who have submitted an application. So if you'd like to know more about our mastermind group program, then please visit our website, which is publichealthentrepreneurs.com and submit an application. You'll find links in the description of this episode as well. As we wrap up this episode, I'd like to ask you to help us spread the word about this podcast. There are a few ways that you can do so by either sharing it directly from the podcast app that you're listening in right now, or share our website with a friend, publichealthentrepreneurs.com. Either way you decide to do so, we just appreciate you helping us spread the word about this podcast. All right, everyone. Until next time, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for listening. Visit publichealthentrepreneurs.com to learn more.